I've got a little job here which is to make or modify some damper rods for uh, motorcycle suspension units. This one on the right is the length they require. And the other two, um, the customer got them in, I don't know where he got them from, but they, they were too long. Um, so the idea is we just cut them to length, turn them down a bit and re-thread them so that they match the sample. Um, cut that much off the end. Not dead straightforward because these things are case hardened and ground. They're a really nice finish and obviously they need to be hard because you don't want them wearing out. But it does make machining them down a little bit more tricky. So to start off with the ends this was just ground, a grinding wheel or fan grinder just to get rid of the the case hardening. And then that was just parted off on the lathe. But the plan was to just, well it's still the plan, is to get a ceramic turning tip, which we have in the tool holder here, um, hence why we've got that one there, um, which is the one I took out the tool holder. So we've used these before, the ceramic tips. And they will turn away the case hardened skin. And that was not going to be too difficult, we hoped, except that having this just in a standard three jaw chuck, I started turning it and I could turning it and I could see that it was running out. And put a clock on it. Oh that's brilliant. That's that's only running out about three thousand. Earlier on it was running out about six. Um, and there I was thinking I'm going to have to put a collet on this. Three thousand, we can probably get away with that. Let's make sure we've got this in the chuck properly and double check it. Well, I've just tightened it up properly in the chuck, and we're getting about that's better. Three and a half thou run out, something like that. I'm thinking we could probably live with that. This end is where. The damper valve sits. I'm guessing. I think the other thread on the other end is where it's actually screwed to the, to the eye suspension eye of the shock absorber. I reckon. And this end is for the damper valve. I think we can just turn that down. Let's see how our how our ceramic tip goes with this material. Well I've got a backstop set in the lathe spindle so that the piece only goes in a certain distance and this is our sample and I've got a bit stop here so that should give us our length all I need to do is change the sample piece out 
for the proper one. And we should be able to just turn it. I'll double check the, the run out before we get going though. Well we've got about between three and a three and a half thou total run out here. And do you know what on an old three jaw self centering self centering chuck that's not too bad and I would have thought that's gonna be good enough for this. I was gonna take the chuck off and put the collet chuck on, but for two pieces that's a lot of faffing around. Um, so I think we'll go with this. Let's see. That's got the, car, the case hardened skin off. It's not a great finish, so I think what I'll do is I'll do the other one, get through the skin, and then I will change the tip back to a normal tip to turn it down to size before we thread it. I thought that was going to push a burr up there, but of course because it's got a case of skin on, that's really quite clean. We might run a stone around that afterwards, but uh, yeah, that's pretty warm as well. Could have done with a bit of coolant, but halfway there. Let's change the tip. See that is um, that's chipped somewhat, and there's only one decent corner left on it. Got a little chip on that corner. Hard to see, but it's there. And that, yeah, on that side. Oops. So we've got one one decent cutting edge left on this, but. Standard CNGs. Oh, that looks so wobbly. What the hell? Well, you can see the run out on that. I don't know if it's actually very much. And I don't know that it matters, but I'm not really happy with that. You know what, I'm going to take this jump off. Put a collar chuck on. Which is what I should have done in the first place. It seems a waste of just two pieces, but I think it would be a good idea. We've got, I don't know, 60 millimeters sticking out of the, the collet 
and we've got foul run out showing total. So that's a bit better than we were getting in the chuck and I hope that if we move this in closer to the that there we can actually see the dial yeah that's not half a thou there I'm not convinced that these rods are a straight. Um, they've quite possibly been centerless ground, and that's not always as good as you might think. But that's heck of a lot better than in the chuck. So. Um, Up against the stop. It was a bit closer to the collet than it was against the chuck, but still, it should still work okay. That to there. I if we dare try and put the clock on it again, just to see. I mean, if it was good before, it should be good now, but uh, let's just double check. I think that's good. Okay, good job. I double checked that last night. I picked up was eight by one. It's fine, right? Looks good to me.
you're brave you can do this with a power on but uh, I'm not <laughs> not for this bit especially since I don't know quite how much I'm doing um, last thing I want to do is have it threaded too much let's have a look at this should have left the power on I could have reversed it out That's about it. Well, after a bit of faffing about with there, looks like a bit too much thread on that, I hope that's not a problem. Oh dear. No, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs>